Hi guys, welcome again. In today's video, we're gonna work on the app settings screen. We're gonna use for first time the planners connector and we're gonna see how can we get data from planner, like the list of plans as well as the list of buckets. Also, we're gonna look at how can we send information to a SharePoint list and how can we store information in collections. So this is gonna be a really interesting video and hope you like. So let's start. Okay, so first of all, let's start looking at what we want to achieve, right? The final result. So when we click on this icon, uh, we are gonna show this app, app settings screen where we see our plans as well as the default buckets that we we have from each plan. Basically, this information comes from Planner, so you can see we can select the different plans as well as their its buckets and, and change the update those values, right? Um, now let's go to our SharePoint list where are, where we are going to store that information. Actually, we have this app settings list where we have uh, these three fields. We have the title, category and value. And we're going to store information about the plan title, plan ID, bucket name and bucket ID. You can see the values that have been stored by default. And we are going to be able to update those values from the app. We see here there is a sample plan that I created as well as its buckets. That's the information that we are going to be showing and storing this, in this list. Okay, so uh, let's start. What we're going to do first is we're going to create a new screen. So in order to do that, we are just duplicating an existing screen. Let me rename this screen to App Settings Screen. Okay, cool. Now let me just remove this form because we don't need that as well as let me do some changes here in the header. I'm just going to change the text to App Settings. And let me just do some changes. For example, I don't want to execute this reset button. We are just going to want to come back to the home screen. By now, also let me put the, the on select uh, method to false for this icon. That's it. Okay, we can now see that uh, this new screen is working. The idea is that when I click on that icon, we should go to that screen. So just let me change the on select method to navigate. So we're going to navigate to this application setting screen that we have just created, right? Okay. Now let's preview it. So you can see that I can click here. I can go back. Um, basically, we have the, the screen. Now let's start adding some controls, right? So we, we are going to do this really quickly. We just want to add uh, all of these labels uh, and icons that are, I'm going to be using at the, at the beginning. I just want to put this, this rectangle, which is going to be something like a a section where we are going to put the, this text, right? So this is going to be the title of this section, settings for action items. Obviously, the idea of this screen is to be able to configure several settings. By now, we are just starting configuring the settings for the, for the plan that we are going to use to store the tasks, right? So let me do just some quick adjustments of the, of the look and feel. Let me put this phone as well as let's change, for example, the the size. We can put this on bold. Excellent. And let me copy basically this this label because we are going to create some additional labels here, right? Okay, so uh, this is going to be in normal. We don't want to put this in bold. Um, let's change the, the text. Basically, this label is going to be select a plan. Uh, 
select a plan for the task creation and here is going to be select a default bucket okay cool now let's add uh, some controls so we're gonna add basically a couple of drop downs just let me put this drop down here and we're gonna add an additional drop down here okay we are just adding the control that we're gonna need so let me do some adjustments on the on the look and feel of this control for example here uh, we're gonna change the the feel of this um, of this rectangle as you can see now uh, the rectangle is transparent and the border is gonna be one so now it looks like a section right and we're gonna be able to add additional sections later now let me add a, a connection to a, our SharePoint list basically we want to connect to the list that I just show you the application settings list so let me select this app settings list now we have added that connection and now we need obviously to add an additional connection this connection is going to be a connection to planner right because we want to basically query our planner to see the list of uh, plans as well as buckets from each plan so now we have that, that connector okay so now uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the invisible property of the app setting screen and we're going to create a collection a collection basically is going to store in memory uh, a set of records so the col the collect method is going to ask me asking me the name of the collection first which is going to be plans collection and then the items that we want to store in that collection and to store that uh, information in the collection we're going to use the planner connector uh, and particularly we are going to use the method list my plant version 2 basically this method is going to show me the list of plants available uh, so when we put we put the value basically we are getting the list of all the available plants so it's going to be easy here in the items uh, property from the drop down we basically put the name of the collection which is plants collection right so when we preview um but uh, okay first of all we need to go back and now we see there is a, a list of plants but we are just basically looking at the ids we want to show the name so we change that in here we select the value the value that we want to show is the title so it, it was really easy in that way we are ju we are just showing the the plants but you see that each time i come back from the home screen to this screen the, it's like we are duplicating the values right it's like we are loading again the plan so to change that we're gonna use a method clear uh, it's gonna ask me for a collection which is gonna be the plans collection so each time we load this screen basically we are uh, uh, we are uh, cleaning this collection right that's what the clear method do and we're gonna again uh, so we can test test that and you can see that we just see the list of available plants once right now let me do some uh, adjustment to this collection we can also add some items manually as you can see when i put comma you see that we can add not only the information that comes from the plan the the planner connector but we can manually add some items so we're gonna add, uh, an, an, add an item at the beginning so the syntaxis is basically we're going to specify the properties uh, in this format so for example the property title is going to be is going to have this value select a plan and the property uh, id we need to specify a property id let me just do this adjustment it's going to be let's put the value of um, zero for example 
right? Because remember that the information that comes from the connector have both properties, title and ID. That's why we need to add an item at the beginning with both properties. So you see, in addition to the information that comes from the connector, we have added that initial item, right? Just let's let make sure that we rename the this control that we have added. Now the idea is that when I do uh, I select one plan, I want to uh, show the list of packets. That's why we have added this this validation. So basically, I am selling, I am doing this validation. If we have selected any value different than zero, we are gonna create a collection of buckets. Uh, we are gonna basically use this uh, list buckets method to get the information from planner based on the on the item selected. So it's similar like what we did uh, for the drop down of the of the plans, uh, but now we are using a different method. And we are just going to show the name value, right? So when we preview and we select one of these plants, I click this, and we are going to show basically all the plants that comes from that, all the buckets that come from the plant. Uh, but again, it's we're having like the same problem, right? Each time we select a different item, it's like we are duplicating the values. It's where we are loading again the values to the collection. So we are going to use again the clear uh, method. It's gonna be the same. Clear, and here basically we specify the name of the collection, buckets collection. Okay, so we are gonna remove all of the values when it when it change when we when we select a, a new item from this drop down. Uh, you can see that, and uh, each time it's gonna be load the new values. Uh, we need to do that adjustment also in the invisible uh, property of the home screen. Uh, so let me just copy the same. Let me just copy all these uh, validations and, and queries. And uh, let me go to the invisible property of the app screen. Uh, and let me just paste it. So basically what we're doing is each time the form load, we're gonna just do the same, right? So you can see I can sell, I can go back to the home screen again and you see we preload both drop downs. Excellent. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're going to configure the button to submit that data to the SharePoint list. So now we're gonna use a new method. This, this method is the patch method. And the patch method is asking me to a source, basically, where are we going to store that information? It's going to be the name of the app settings list and the record, which is going to be the data that we're going to send to that list. So to do that, uh, we're going to basically uh, do a, a query to that list and we're going to filter the values of that list to update its values. So we're going to use the filter of this app settings list and we're gonna filter where the title, where the field title is equal to a plan title, right? Because that's the value, that's the, the, the record or the item that we're gonna update. So uh, when I do that, uh, we're gonna get basically the first item that we found. And actually that's the, the only item that we wanna update, right? There are no more records with that title. And uh, basically we, so you can see that what we want to update is the value field. So the value field, it's going to be equal to the value from the drop down uh, that have the list of, of uh, plans. So this drop down, uh, we use the selected uh, property and the title, the title from the selected Item, right? That's the way we are gonna basically update um, this item. So this is only to update the record from the plan, the plan title item. But we wanna do the same for the rest of the items of this list, right? So we, I want to update also the plan ID, for example. So just let me copy and paste this and change the title plan ID, and the value is gonna be 
Again, the same from the dropdown, but instead of getting the title, we're going to get the, the ID. Mm -hmm. So basically, we are updating this second record, and we want to do the same for the bucket. So it's going to be really easy. We just want to copy and paste this same method again and do the corresponding adjustments. So here in the title value, we're going to change that by bucket name. Now we are going to get the value selected from the other dropdown, which is going to be the dropdown bucket. And we are going to get the, the value from the selected text property and the value is going to be the name. And now the the final thing that we're going to update is basically the bucket ID field, right? So let me update the bucket ID. Okay, and we just going to change this property to ID instead of name. And that's it. Okay. Everything is good now. Yeah. OK, so let's do a test. So let's say we're going to select the sales opportunity plan. The buckets have been loaded. Now let me select the done bucket. OK, uh, we can do this. We can select others and do the change just to validate. Yeah, because by default we have these values. We want to select others to show that it's working. So when I click on this button, and if we refresh the information from the list, what we're going to see is that the values have been updated successfully, right? All the values from this list have been setted, successfully updated. Now, um, you can see that I have uh, updated those values, but those values that doesn't show by default. So let me change the default property of, of these dropdowns. Basically, we are going to use the, the following a method we're gonna go to the we're gonna filter the app settings list and basically we're gonna get the value from the from the item from from the item which title is plan title um so let me again it's gonna be similar to the function that we use for updating the values right we're gonna get just the first value and uh, here, what I'm going to get is the, the value field. So we see now we show the, the default value of this drop down and we're going to do the same for the bucket. Just filter up settings and we're going to filter where the title is the name of the is the bucket name um, value. And the same first. And what we're gonna add is basically the va the value field, right? So just let me preview to see if it's working. Yep, yeah, and we see that it's working. And we can do a change to validate actually if it's working. We can select another values. We can update, update those values. Um, we can go to the list, refresh, and see if it's working. Yes, it's actually working. Um, just let me do an, a final adjustment. The idea is that when I click on that button and I send the values, I obviously want to navigate back to the home screen, right? So let me just put this navigate method. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So again, let's do a change. In this case, just update the bucket. I click on submit. We send the information. We go back to the home screen. And again, we see that the values have been updated successfully. And we can do this test each time. And it's working. OK, that was all for today's video. In this video, we saw many things. I hope you enjoyed this content. In our next video, we're going to start working on the action plan screen. 
So again, if you like this content, please uh, don't forget to share these videos with anybody you think could get uh, help on this. And also it's important for me your feedback, so please don't forget to put your comments and subscribe if you haven't done that before. So see you in our next videos.